This slide shows the equation used to design for the shear in the flank sections. It basically consists of three main parts. First is to determine whether the transverse reinforcement is required within the flank section. Next is to design for the transverse reinforcement. And the third part, it will be the checking for the other requirements by the Eurocode. We shall discuss this one by one. First, we need to determine whether the transverse reinforcement is required within a flank section. This can be checked based on these equations, where the shear stress has to be less than 0.4 FCTD in order to not having the transverse reinforcement within the section. The shear stress is calculated based on these equations where we need to determine the data FD, the differential forces happening along the sections and also data X. The data x is referring to half of the distance from the zero moment to the maximum moment. The data fd is quantified by these equations in the functions of data m. The data m is referring to the differences between the moment located at data x. This D minus HF divided by 2 is referring to the lever arm between the centroid of the flank sections to the centroid of the reinforcement bars. And there is a ratio of effective flank divided by the width of the flank. The effective clear flank BF node is referring to the BF minus BW divided by 2. It is referring to the clear distance from the web to the side of the flank, assuming both sides are symmetrical. Substitute the relevant equations, you will be able to obtain the longitudinal shear stress happening within the shear flank. The longitudinal shear stress is checked against the 40% of SCTD. FCTD is referring to the tensile design strength of the concrete. It can be obtained by dividing the FCTK, which is the characteristic tensile strength of the concrete, divided by the partial factor of safety of concrete, which is equals to 1.5. In the case that the longitudinal shear stress is less than 40% of the design tensile strength of the concrete, no shear reinforcement is required within the flank section. That means the concrete itself is able to resist the shear stress developed within the section. However, if the VED is greater than 0.4 SCTD, we will need to provide shear reinforcement within the flank sections. To do so, we need to first determine the shear angle of the sections. This can be calculated from this equation and the shear angle here must fall within the acceptable range. The maximum allowable angle is 45 degree. If the angle here is found to be greater than 45 degree, the sections needs to be redesigned. Depending on the stress conditions within the flank, whether it is in compression or tension, the smallest allowable angle is as indicated here. If the angle calculated from these equations is smaller than these numbers, 
the smallest value is applied which are 26.5 degree for compression conditions and 38.6 degree for the tension condition if the angles fall within the range the angle will be adopted once the angle has been decided it is to be substituted into the equation here we need to first check these equations where the longitudinal shear load has to be less than the maximum shear resistance of the concrete this is to prevent crushing of the concrete under high shear load the factor V1 here is given by these equations as a function of FCK if this found acceptable we will proceed to determine the amount of reinforcement bar required within the flank section substitute the data F into the equation here the VED here is determined here this will be the amount of transverse reinforcement required within the section in the context of Eurocode this equation has been used as one of the requirements to check for the amount of reinforcement bar required within the flank section there is an additional requirement as given in Eurocode 2 where the amount of the reinforcement bar within the flank sections needs to be at least greater than half of the amount of reinforcement bar calculated here plus the area of transverse bending of the flank based on the simplified model of the flank section here the flank here is also assuming undergoing the cantilever conditions where vertical load is acting on top of the flank this transverse reinforcement is also used to receive the cantilever deformations of the flank with that the summations of this needs to be the greatest than the SF divided by the spacing for the flank also we need to check for the minimum amount of transverse steel based on the requirement these equations need to be applied and the AS mean has to be at least greater than 0 0.0013